Okay, we might make this the last reality bender on the prophecies of Daniel and move on to some other interesting prophecies that might give you cause to rethink the world that you thought you lived in. Okay, we know from the existence of the Dead Sea Scrolls that multiple copies of the Book of Daniel physically existed at least 197 years before 32 AD when Jesus came to Jerusalem as the Messiah precisely when the angel Gabriel said he would come in conversation with that Daniel recorded. But in addition to this, Gabriel foretold of another event that was to occur at least 240 years after the existence of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, this additional prophecy has been misunderstood by many Christians, leading them to believe there's this missing 70th week of Daniel that's still to come. But what's happened is that they've tried to combine what were actually two different prophecies. The prophecy of the coming of the Messiah was 69 weeks, or seven year periods, after the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. And the prophecy of the 70 weeks is about the curse that is still to come upon Israel. See, so Daniel was meditating on two different prophecies when the angel Gabriel came to him. The first was Jeremiah's prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. But the second prophecy was the sevenfold increasing curses foretold by Moses in what we now refer to as Leviticus chapter 26 verses 14 to 46. Now these curses gave the Israelites the opportunity to repent but if they did not their punishment would be increased sevenfold both in severity and in duration. But because Israel did not repent of their sin but continued in it we know from Jeremiah chapter 35 verse 17 and chapter 36 verse 31 that all of these curses were to be applied to both Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Now these curses end in the total destruction of all the temples and cities of Israel and the scattering of the people among the heathen nations. Now by the look of it Daniel was under the impression that this was the 70 year exile of Israel in Babylon. However Gabriel corrected him by pointing out that there were still 70 weeks that's seven year periods of punishment left for the people and for the city of Jerusalem. Now it's important to understand as we will soon see that the punishment is on the city of Jerusalem as well as Israel. Now the 70 years of exile in Babylon was actually the fulfillment of being delivered into the hands of their enemy as mentioned in verse 25 and not the total destruction and scattering mentioned in later verses. But what was the significance of Gabriel pointing out that 70 weeks or sevens were left to be determined, that is imposed? Well, these were sevenfold increasing curses and 70 weeks was 70 years times seven. In other words, 490 Jewish years. In other words, seven times more than the 70 years of exile in Babylon, as the sevenfold increasing curses of Leviticus decreed. Now, where many people get confused is that Gabriel actually gave no start date for these 490 years. The issuing of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was the start date for the coming of the Messiah, not for the 70 weeks. But, while Gabriel gave no starting point we do know how the curse ends. That is, with the total destruction of all temples and cities and high places in the promised land and the scattering of the power of the holy people. That is, the scattering of Israel as a national power or a nation. Scattering not only its people, but also its government and army. Now, many people try to point to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple 
in 70 AD as the fulfilment of this prophecy. But the curses of Leviticus 26 clearly state that it ends with the total destruction of all cities, temples and high places of the promised land and in the scattering of the power of the holy people. Now that did not happen at Jerusalem in 70 AD. For Jerusalem was not the last Jewish city standing, nor was it the demise of either the Jewish government or the Jewish army. The war with Rome raged on well after the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. The last Jewish city and military and government stronghold to fall was the city of Masada, which did not fall to Rome until 74 AD. It was only then that all cities and high places of Israel were destroyed and the power of the holy people truly scattered. Okay, so we know when and where the prophecy was finally fulfilled. So let's find out what is so remarkable about the date 74 AD. Again, we have to do a little conversion between Jewish years of 360 days and our modern years of 365 and a quarter days. So, 490 Jewish years times 360 days equals 176,400 days. Now divide this by 365 and a quarter days and we get 482.95 of our modern years. Then we have to add a year for that little quirk when moving between AD and BC dates because there is no year zero which throws the maths out by a year. OK, so let's see what happens when we count back 483.95 modern years from 74 AD. We arrive at 409 to 410 BC. So what significant event happened around 409, 410 BC? Well historians tell us sometime around 408, 409 BC they finished rebuilding Jerusalem. So 490 Jewish years or 70 weeks after the completion of the rebuilding of Jerusalem the prophecy of Daniel and the culmination of the sevenfold increasing curses of Leviticus 26 was fulfilled at the fall of the last Jewish stronghold of Masada in 74 AD. Now remember that Gabriel said the judgment was against both the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem itself. So what better way than once you've rebuilt the city it has 490 years to complete the curses of Leviticus 26. Now some might be tempted to call this oh, sheer coincidence or just pure blind luck but you know I'd find that by far the harder thing to swallow.